I often talk about how the media plays dirty games to protect people and skew the news so that they can claim things are false when they're actually true. One example would be like, you know, there'll be a story that'll come up. It'll say Donald Trump was seen eating chocolate ice cream. And then there will be a fact check by one of those famous fact checking organizations that'll say something like, did Donald Trump really eat chocolate ice cream with sprinkles on top? False in big, bold letters. But then fine. And then I'll give you this big description. It'll be like people often prefer chocolate ice cream with sprinkles. You get all the way to the bottom of the article and it'll say, while Trump did actually eat chocolate ice cream, he didn't have sprinkles on it. That's the name of the game. So now that you understand, here's what they do. The fact checking organizations, when there's a story they don't like, they will add context that is irrelevant to the post based on their personal interpretation or as an excuse to label information false, which brings me to this segment. What you are seeing here is a post from Defeat the Media. They say journalism is dead. One of the last ones left is rotting in jail. Others have been car bombed, oft or simply censored. And you can see here this big false information checked by independent fact checkers. See why? Well, behind this little fact check screen is a tweet from me where I said a former president of the United States has been recorded in flight logs and now ID'd by a victim as having been on Pedo Island. And it's not and it's not the top headline in every major newspaper. Journalism died long ago. News outlets are just political advocacy groups at this point, something like that. It fades out, it becomes hard to see. Now, how is that false information? I wonder. Somebody messaged me and said, hey, I just want to let you know you're being censored. This is not my post. Someone took a screen grab of one of my tweets. That's what Facebook is at this point. My post is a combination of fact and opinion. I take my facts very seriously. The context, President Bill Clinton has been recorded in flight logs as being on Epstein's plane. That's all I said. He's been recorded in flight logs. And now he's been ID'd by a victim as being on Epstein Island. The point I was trying to make in, unfortunately, only 240 characters. Around the time of this post, documents had been released showing that uh, one of the victims ID'd Bill Clinton as having been on the island. I felt that because of these documents, which came out in response to a, a, an investigative reporter, uh, at, I believe the Miami Herald, I think, or the Miami Times, I'm not sure the name. Uh, I thought that because this was, was coming out, these documents, there should be major headlines about Bill Clinton investigations into him. And I said journalism died a long time ago. It's political advocacy. Now, the secondary opinion isn't necessarily only predicated on the first point I was making. However, they claim this was false. Here's my favorite part. Here's the website lead stories. In fact, they claim they confirm every single thing I said was true, but they added context. Hmm. So what did I say? A former president of the United States has been recorded in flight logs. Yes, he has. And now I did by a victim as having been on Pedo Island. That is also true. And it's not the top headline on every major newspaper. That is also true. Journalism died long ago. That's my opinion. News outlets are just political advocacy groups now. Also, my opinion. Here's what they did. Do flight logs show former President Bill Clinton visited Epstein's pedo island, but the media is ignoring it? No, that's not true. Oh, congratulations. I didn't say that. He interpreted it the way he wanted to interpret it to claim it was false. Now, to be fair, I understand why he read it that way or whoever wrote this read it that way. A former president has been recorded in flight logs. The point I was trying to make, which is, this is factually true, without his added context outside of what I was posting, is that uh, Bill Clinton and Epstein have deep connections. He's been recorded in flight logs. That's a fact. I didn't say the number because I was trying to avoid the ridiculous left versus right arguing over nonsensical points. It is a fact that he was recorded in flight logs. It is a fact that documents came out and now he was ID'd by a victim. Yes, because the court documents had come out. What I meant by now was the news release, but I never said the logs show him going to the island. They add that so they can then say the whole post is false. Why? Well, the post was particularly viral and it is factually correct. Now, if he wanted to make a post that said added context, I would be totally fine with that. If they wanted to say, you know, um, partially true, um, I think that's unfair as well as calling it partially true. But if there was something that could say like context required to better understand this, I am 100% in favor of this. But now 
These people over at Lead Stories have impugned my credibility based off the fact that they wanted to interpret a certain way, or I could take a more negative view of what they're doing, and they're trying to defend Bill Clinton because a story came out. It wasn't being widely covered enough. So I'll tell you what. Let me, let me read it. He says, there are no flight logs that document Bill Clinton, the only former U.S. president named in the logs, huh, as landing at Epstein's Caribbean island. Didn't say he did. Yes, as Epstein vict- victim did tell lead stories editor in chief Alan Duke in Jan- uh, well, oh, oh, that's interesting. Yes. And Epstein victim did tell this to lead stories editor in chief Alan Duke in January 2015. And other news outlets reported it. But flight logs that show Clinton flew 26 times on Epstein's plane, mostly during a highly publicized AIDS education tour in Africa, do not document him landing on the island. Congratulations. I didn't say that. It doesn't say in my post. He took it out in a different context that is not fair to me because he read it wrong. Well, I'll tell you what. I made a phone call to this year fella, and I asked him to simply issue a retraction. He wanted me to go through some appeals process, and I said no. And he was like, it's part of the rules. You have to do it. And I said, no, I don't. I don't play the game by your rules because you chose to defame me as publishing false information. That is not true. And I will also add, Facebook has also decided to put a label of false information on my post that is actually correct. So I hold them partially responsible for this. We'll see how far it goes. I will absolutely be taking this in in, in a legal direction because I am not okay with these news outlets trying to play games with what was actually said. Let's be objective. To be fair, a lot of people could interpret this in a lot of different ways. But some people interpret many different things in many different ways. You know, if you take out the Oxford comma, you can change a lot of sentences and make them sound really weird, even though your initial uh, intent was, you know, one thing. You may be familiar with, uh, there's a funny joke post where it says, you know, the, the, uh, I'll I'll change the word because I got to keep it family friendly. The, the ice cream makers, Stalin, the ice cream, ice cream man, comma, Stalin, comma, and, you know, uh, Donald Trump, all attended a party. And the image will then be an ice cream man, Stalin and Donald Trump. If you take out the Oxford comma, the ice cream makers, Trump and, you know, uh, uh, and Stalin, then you see an image of Trump and Stalin as the ice cream man. Anyway, I'm confusing the point, but you may, you may understand the meme. The point is how you read something when it's, when it's, when it's formulated precisely on purpose, it's not my fault. And you don't have the right to then incorrectly label what I said as false when it is in fact true. What we need to get down to is whether or not this was true or false. Dare I say this post, in my opinion, to me, it looks like malice, actual malice. Now, I'm not a lawyer, but here's the funny thing about what they did. My post has been labeled false by this organization. That is defamation. That is libelous. It's not defamation. It's libel. Here's what's important. This post they put up actually confirms everything I said is true. They acknowledge 26 times on Epstein's planes. He is in the flight logs. Fact one, a former president has been recorded in flight logs. Yes. If you want to be really fair, I'm going to be honest. It's it's I I, I, I am very precise in the language I use. You may notice sometimes I delete tweets when when, when the language is imprecise. I use that language as vaguely as possible to avoid people trying to play dirty games like this. I was trying to highlight the connection between Clinton and Epstein's flights. But you could just literally say every every president's been recorded in any flight log anytime they've they've flown. But it is a specific reference most people know. They acknowledge this. He even goes on to say, here are the flight logs. So why are you saying what I posted was false if you then post the flight logs? He then goes on to say, in an interview obtained by Radar, Roberts claimed that former president visited the island in 2002. So what about my post is incorrect? You don't like my opinion that when these documents came out, every news, ah, there it is. I believe this shows the individual himself is offended that I criticize journalism. I said it died. He's angry. I said news outlets should be covering this and they're just political advocacy groups. I think he's personally upset by this. So I think he acknowledges he doesn't like the fact that I'm taking dig a dig at the news industry in a very popular, prominent and widespread Twitter post with tons of retweets. He didn't like it. He acknowledges in the post he knows what I said is true. If you know what I said is true, why did you label it as false? Why did you call it a hoax? 
Does that mean he knew what I was saying was true? He labeled it as hoax and he had a real reason to be upset about what I was saying. Welcome to how the game is played. I made a phone call to this man. I explained it. He agreed with me. I said, is it true that he was in these logs? Yes. Is it true that he was ID'd by the victim? Yes. And is the other sta- two statements just my opinion? Yes. Thank you. And he said, if I want a retraction, I have to go through some forms or some other process. There you go. He, he was yelling at me on the phone. It was He wouldn't stop. And I, I kept saying, listen, listen, listen. I'll have my lawyer reach out. I'll have my lawyer reach out. Just calm, like stop. And he's like, I'm, I'm, I'm not calm. And he's yelling at me. And I'm like, OK, dude. So I'll tell you what. Hopefully he takes it down, issues an apology, whatever. I'm going to have to reach out to Facebook because uh, Facebook's the one who slapped the false information on it. In fact, he called it a hoax. We'll see how this plays out. But anyway, you get the point. I got a couple more segments coming up in a few minutes and I will see you all shortly.